Hi, my name's Skelly. Um, I kind of wanted to start making Maple Royals videos for not only the community, but my friend who him and his wife just recently had their first kid. So I won't be able to play with him much. So I figured I should make him some videos so he can watch in his downtime, try to keep up with uh, what's going on in the game and then up with me as well. I also know a lot of people in the community, including myself, like to watch videos in the background while they just kind of grind out. Um, and when I try to find like more Maple Royals related videos, I kind of have a hard time coming across them. Um, so I figure I might like step in and make some. Um, I don't really have too much to go over, um, but there is something I wanted to cover that I don't think anybody's made a video about. Um, I know there's a guide out there for one that I currently used. I know HP washing is super relevant in the game, and this is kind of an alternative to it. Um, it's called the Rehuel Quest, and you get it when you're level 120. Um, you will get a little light bulb above your head, and you will click it, and he will get an invitation called Search for the Elixir of Life. You will come to talk to him, and he will give you a quest to go and hunt like random monsters throughout the world. Um, once you collect these drops, you come back here, and he will give you a potion. Um, it's completely untradeable, but it raises your base health. So you can see here, I only have 700 or 7,799, but that's with all my equips on. So if I took all my equips away, I think I would have like 7,000 something. Um, you can do this based on your class to a certain extent and an unlimited amount of times, right? So it's up to a certain point based on your class's base HP. So I think for Shadowers it was 9,500. Um, so once I have 9,500 base HP uh, without my equips, I will no longer be able to do this infinitely. I'll only be able to do it as a daily, which is still fine because for Shadowers you only really need like 9,000 health. Uh, the strongest boss in the game is Von Leon currently. And he only hits for 17 to 18,000. So because of Miso Guard, you only have to take, you know, 9,000 damage, and you'll be able to recover. So once I have, you know, 9,500 9, at base HP, I should be pretty good to go. Plus equips and things like that, I should be pretty in the market um, for being able to do just about any boss in the game, um, and be okay without worrying about dying or anything like that. So I've already done this quite a few times um, I don't think it's too bad I would say each little quest takes about 20 to 30 minutes depending on how lucky or unlucky you get um, I right now am doing the one this is for Temple of Time the Memory Monk this is in Leafaria this is like the Sheeps this is the Humunculus that are pretty close um, the thing that's kind of unlucky about the quest is you can't collect extras of these and then so if you were to reroll the quest and you were to get this eventually again uh, you, you can't just immediately complete it so every time you complete a quest it sucks up all your items um, so I currently am gonna go do this um, I've already done it a few times but I think that's kind of what I'm excited for um, is just right now but not even focusing on leveling up just trying to get uh, some of these. So this is the area. Somebody's already here, so we'll CC really quick. That's kind of where I'm at with my Shadower, though, right now, is I'm really just trying to level up. Uh, I'm not too worried about anything else. Um, I want to get some better in-game gear. I've been playing on, like, a lot of different characters. Um, I have, like, a Priest that I've been working on doing. Um, some other things like that. But... I really just kind of come back to my shadower since my friend's going to be out of commission for a little bit. Um, we were HP washing Corsairs together, and that was pretty fun. But it's kind of hard for us to find times to line up together. Um, we just work different schedules. Um, now he has a kid, so it's even more difficult for us. So I kind of just got back on the shadower grind. Um, I need better face stompers and a black fist cloak. I think that's like my first step. I'm not trying to get anything too cracked in terms of in-game gear. Um, I'm not trying to get like face stompers with like 15. I think I would settle for like face stompers with like 10 or 12 and then a black fist cloak that's like 15. I'm not trying to get like a 
20 or 22 attack black fist cloak i know i've seen quite a few of those um i do have 15 attack scgs which is not like bad um but i would be interested in getting maybe some 20 scgs um i also currently have my zakuim helm unscrolled which is kind of a mistake i really wish i had some scrolls for it i was kind of leaning i don't think this is going to be my in game helmet i may eventually get like the off haven helmet once i do neo tokyo but i'm not exactly sure i actually have a pretty good zakuim helmet for a shadower um but it just really kind of depends on what off haven helmet i eventually get um and i wouldn't be too for sure on that you know so it's kind of hard to say if I should just go ahead and scroll it and say, fuck it, whatever happens, or if I should try and 30% it and boom it. Not exactly sure where I'm at with that. Um, I think, like, in-game gear is ridiculously expensive. I've played this game on and off for quite a few years. Um, I remember the first time we got into it, me and my friend Hayden played for a while. Um, before we both ended up taking a break, I ended up voting almost every day, I think, for up to a year, even after we stopped playing, because I knew one day we would eventually get back into it, and lo and behold, we did, um, and I ended up having, like, almost two million necks on, I think, when we finally got back into the game, um, which was pretty crazy. I have spent most of it on Gachapon and AP resets. Um, I was planning on personally using the AP resets. Uh, I did use quite a few because I messed up my stats very badly. Um, and I used a lot of my AP resets to fix it. I think before I stopped playing the game, I just dumped points into HP for whatever reason. I can't explain why I did, but I did. And... Coming back to it, I was like, wow, that was such a mistake. Especially when I found out about the rehuel quest and how absolutely ridiculous it was for me to like HP wash at like 140, especially when I didn't even have that much spare MP to go with. Um, it's quite a bit to try and do that. So I still have a lot of leftover Nexon and I still have a lot of leftover AP resets. Um, I was gonna use all of those AP resets on that Corsair. Um, I also have a Bowman that I kind of want to make videos on. I'm trying to do all, not all the quests in the game, but get the quest medal with him. Um, I was going to make videos on him, but he actually does need to be HP washed. Um, and so that's something else to talk about, especially with this quest, is you can only do it up to a certain point. So even though a Shadower and a Night Lord can go to like 9,500 HP, for a Night Lord, you don't have Miso Guard. So you're definitely going to need to still HP wash on top of doing the quest. It's just kind of like a little min-max thing you can do, right? So that way you don't have to do this insane amount of HP washing. Uh, you could hit like 120. You can actually probably do the math on it, that if you got this amount of base HP, and then you went and then you like you know what i'm saying you could have like okay if i have 9500 hp and i'm going for this i need this many you know ability points etc etc to wash with so you don't have to like start washing immediately at 60 you may not have to double wash i haven't really done the math on it but i think that's what i'm going to end up doing on my bowman um is i will just do the reheal quest i know some people aren't like a big fan of doing stuff like this where they grind out I don't particularly mind it. Um, it's just kind of a part of the game and it gives me something to do outside of just leveling up. Which I think is super nice because everybody know who's ever played Maple Story and even Maple Royals as private server knows it's kind of a grindy game. Um, I did play Maple Story when I was a kid. Um, I played before even the pirate class came out, which is pretty impressive, honestly. Um, my first class was a thief. Um, I remember kind of playing the game and I thought, oh, you know, it's so cool. They, they have the dagger and I like saw uh, savage blow and I was like, that's it. That's what I want to do. So I never really leveled up super far in original maple story. Um, mostly because I was a kid and I had a very like small attention span. So it made it kind of difficult for me to focus on leveling up. Um, I ended up 
playing for quite a while after the Big Bang update, which was kind of when the game changed like quite a bit. Um, I think that's when um, a lot of people kind of dropped out of the game. Um, I like the Big Bang update. I like the concept of it. Um, just the the direction that the game steered in of being like more flashy and less like party focused, it eventually lost me, um, which was kind of a bummer. Um, that's something I really enjoyed about like old school Maple Story is that it was very party focused. Um, you could never really do anything. You could do things by yourself, um, but party quests were always like so pushed. I think that was like to me maybe the best part about it. Um, and that's something I really enjoy even in Maple Royals today. There's a lot of party quests and things to do like that, which I think are super sweet. Um, and it's something that always kind of brings me back to it. Um, even with that said, some of the party quests I feel like are maybe a little bit too easy. Um, something that'd be kind of interesting for Maple Royals, in my opinion, is maybe if we had a like, like some harder bosses. Like I know in original Maple Story, they had chaos bosses like chaos versions of bosses so like there's a chaos zaquum chaos um papillatus things like that and i think that would be really interesting for this game as well um i would definitely be really interested in seeing you know some amount of chaos bosses in the game um just something very insanely not insanely difficult but something at least like maybe a little difficult because a big part of Maple Story currently is that you just really need the HP and the attention span to not die to the boss, and then after that you're good to go. I don't think that's like terrible gameplay, but it can be kind of monotonous, especially when you're like not dealing a lot of damage so the boss doesn't die quickly. Um, I think my greatest example of this is probably like the Lionheart Castle, like mini bosses you have to do like during the pre-quest. Um, they end up like not even necessarily being like difficult bosses, but just like kind of frustrating in how long they take if you're trying to solo them. Um, I remember when I did it, I bombed them because I didn't have a party, so obviously I couldn't like assassinate Boomerang Step over and over and over. Um, it would take literally forever to do that. So I ended up dropping the money to just bomb them to get through the pre-quest. And um, it took still even just a really long time, and it was super frustrating. Um, and it, like I knew I was going to be able to do it, it was just a matter of actually doing it. And that's kind of something that kills me about Maple Story is that like some of the bosses aren't necessarily like skill based. It's just like, hey, pay attention, and, you know, do the thing, and then you do the thing. And it's like, all right, that was something. It'd be nice if they had kind of like more of the skill based things where you have to dodge attacks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I know there's debuffs like Seduce the crazy skulls which some of the those are pretty frustrating but i think it ultimately like makes the boss battling experience maybe a little bit more interesting um like von leon has the rocks that drop that one hit you i think that's really interesting i i really enjoy that it kind of focuses you to force or it forces you to focus throughout the entire fight um you're never really safe and no matter your HP you can't really do it. I think it'd be cool if there was like a Chaos Zack that had something along those lines. Um, I don't really ever play current Maple Story, um, but I saw, I always get videos for it and one of the things I got was a rework of Zack that looked pretty cool. Um, he slams his arms down and apparently i'm not sure if he one hits you but it, it does like a lot of damage and i think that'd be really interesting if they could somehow implement that in this game i also saw they had like a chaos papillatus which he shot lasers around and i'm not sure if they one hit you but that would be something else that'd be really interesting um i know they don't like bring updates to this game very often because they have such a small team that just works on it and keeps it running but it would definitely be something very interesting in the future to see things like that. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the longevity of this game is. Um, I know they just released Von Leon. I know they could release Pink Bean. Uh, that would also be a really cool boss um, to add to the game. I'm not sure what's holding them back from doing it. Um, maybe just like getting the files for it, updating the servers, etc, etc. Um, I'm not too familiar with all of that, so I'm not sure. Um, but that would be something super interesting. Um, 
like one of my favorite things about this game is like the party play like i said so having bosses that you like have to strategize on and really like focus i think would be really interesting um like use your smoke screens timely buccaneers using time leap timely you know paying attention to your buffs etc etc i think that's all like really interesting and makes this game super fun um so it'd be kind of cool to see more content like headed in that direction so i'm not exactly sure what they could really do to like fix current issues and things like that but i don't think it's really like such a big issue that it's into the world um not only does party play like really a big part of this game but also the aesthetic i think is really pleasing it's kind of a comfort game you know nothing's like really hard on the eyes just kind of comfortable and silly to me it's like a lot like fortnite i have a hard time taking fortnite seriously because it's just so silly um super relaxing game just good colors etc etc so i don't think it's anything too bad though um i just always wonder about that and the game's longevity you know like what is it for the next players like what is there to do you know I think that's something and there is definitely a ton of content in this game if you're you know if you're really interested in like playing all the classes and stuff it's not it's not impossible to level up but it definitely does take some time to uh, level up and do you know all the things like for me one of the things i want to do is have the quest character i think that's like a super cool way to play the game um and they, the quests in this game have fixed dxp rates so it's not like completely impossible to just do quest and level up um which is super nice um i'm trying to see right now where this last little drop is at looking for the valley of the antelope which might be around here somewhere okay it's in a really weird spot um i think it's about the same distance no matter which way i go so that's our last drop though for the quest um it really hasn't been too long it's only been about 15 minutes you know so one thing I will say that's super necessary for this quest and doing these quests is a fast travel pass. So I have a 14 day fast travel pass. Um, if you're going to grind this out and just knock this out ASAP, you're definitely going to want to pick one of these up. Um, it's not as fast as a hyper teleport rock, but it definitely helps out. I think I went the wrong way. I did not. Um, I think it definitely helps out quite a bit. Um, I know I've kind of fell in love with it over the hyper teleport rock. Um, teleport rocks are super useful to get to kind of the hard to reach locations. Like if you're trying to get to um, CWK, like the Crimson Wood Keep, keeping a hyper teleport rock for that is super useful. But um, just I think going from city to city, I've definitely like kind of fell in love with the, the pass. Definitely like a cheaper alternative as compared to buying a hyper teleport rock every time you want to go somewhere so that's super nice but we're on the last pickup for our quest um i want to get one more to show you all kind of what all the quest entails um so that's our quest item so what we'll do now is we're gonna farm the rest of these and then we're gonna go and We'll go and pick up another quest and I'll kind of show you what it's like. Um, I might keep going for a little bit on this video. I'll do some on and off uh, just to keep you updated. Uh, one of the things I've been trying to do is I think right now I'm trying to save up for Maple Warrior 20. I've definitely had the money for it in the past and I didn't buy it and I'm kind of regretting it. Um, I'm just scared of the 20 failing. The the 70% may not work out for me and I really don't want to blow you know, one bill on it, that'd be, that'd be very, very frustrating, but it's not the end of the world, I guess, if it doesn't work. Um, my main money-making methods are just kind of, like, monster farm as I'm doing these quests, and my other money-making method is primarily APQ. Um, you normally get, like, four to five apples a run, so it's not too bad. It's, like, 50 mil a day for, like, 20 minutes of work, um, and I don't necessarily do it every day either. Um, just kind of when I have free time, you know, I'm kind of setting on so many AP resets and things like that that I'm not super worried about money. Um, I don't think uh, it's the end of the world if I, you know, don't have to do it every day. But I'm also like 
I'm kind of at this weird spot where I'm not hurting for gear awfully, but it would be super nice. It would be kind of clean if I had some better gear, so. I think I'm at the point where I'm fine just like grinding out every day, like little by little to get there. I'm not like hurting to get my damage up super bad. Um, it's not like I couldn't go get some hard stoppers or use an Onyx Apple for any sort of process if I was doing a boss run or anything to speed it up. Um, outside of that, we're looking pretty good. Um, not only do I do like APQ every day, but I'm also trying to get my black belt from the dojo. Um, it has a pretty big damage buff on it. Um, that's something that does get pretty grindy to me really quick. Um, especially because like if you rec recruit a big enough party and then on top of that, they're all like level 130 plus, you basically one hit every boss up into like Manon. And like even Manon isn't super difficult unless you just get like really unlucky. Um, the final boss is sort of tough, but like normally with such a big party, everybody has their bamboo charges ready. So you, you get to the last boss and then it's just over. So right now I'm on my blue belt. Yeah, I'm on my blue belt. And then I need um, 2,000 more points. I only need to do one more run today before the reset. And then I will be able to get my red belt, um, which is super nice. Um, and then I'll be able to go and get the black belt. And one of the primary reasons I'm doing for that is for the HP buff. Um, I don't really know what other belts there are in the game outside of um, the Von Leon belt and the black belts. Probably some anniversary belts and things like that, but I have not had any of those, so um, I think the black belt's probably pretty worth it. I think that that's kind of where I'm at in getting gear that's easy at least. Um, I also need like the toad bandana. Um, I only have the eyeglasses from LPQ a very long time ago. And I've been trying to go do the Toad boss, but right now I don't think I currently have enough HP to do him. I think his hardest hitting attack is 16 or 17k HP, so I need at least 9k for sure to do that. So that's like a pretty good direction to go in too. So I might do Toad every day until I get, see if there's a party that wants to do it. Maybe I can join a guild. See if I can do Toad every day until I get a good Mandana. And then I may hold on to it, because that's kind of an in-game item for Shadowers, especially if you get a good one, um, and see if I can Chaos Scroll it. I'm definitely like a big fan of the people who do the videos of scrolling. Um, that's something else that I am really sucked into by current Maple Story is people doing their starring videos, or I guess that's like their current day scrolling or whatever. But they always do a hard cut. Um, they always do a hard cut when it fails, and I think it's super funny. Um, especially, I think, because everybody always records, like, their last attempt. So I guess that would be, like, us. Like, we're on a 6+, plus or something, on, like, a weapon, and we're going for the final scroll, and we put, like, a 10% on it or something, and it blows up the item. I think that's definitely... It. Those videos are always, like, super interesting to me. And that's, like, a crazy part about this game is... <laughs> A lot of people just really aren't scared to blow up their stuff, which I think is kind of crazy. I definitely like a certain level of certainty, so if I do any sort of chaos scrolling on a high, high like level item, uh, I'm probably going to save up to just get the white scrolls plus the chaos scrolls. Um, I don't really have any sort of... I don't think I really have any intentions of making a perfect weapon. The only thing I've thought about was like a dagger. I only have a 123 attack dagger. Um, and I've definitely seen 130 attack daggers uh, that go for quite a bit. That'd be something I'd be kind of interested in maybe trying to make myself, but I'm not exactly sold on it. it seems like it's gonna be a lot of money and a lot of time, but I know clean like 120 attack daggers go for quite a bit like one build plus maybe not 120 i think 110 is more like it i'm not exactly sure i can't remember the last time i really checked on any amount of items like that i know i looked at dragon uh kinjars yesterday the shield 
for Shadowers. And I have a 28 attack, which isn't completely awful. Um, and I know a lot of people will seek 35 attack Dragon Kangers, but that's just... That's like an insane kind of goal. I've seen clean Dragon Kangers that have 20 weapon attack. That's definitely like a perfect type of item. Like 35 attack is basically the highest you can get. Um, I think I'd like to settle for like a 31 or a 32, but I'm not super pressed on that because three or four weapon attack isn't going to be a big enough damage buff to make me want to spend billions of uh, currency on it. So I'm not super pressed about it. I think I selected the wrong spot. Fast travel pass coming in super clutch. After I complete this quest and kind of show you the rehealing bit, I'll probably go do dojo. Um, I don't think I'm gonna record myself doing dojo. That doesn't seem super fun. Um, probably just end the video there. straight past it. I do think I have a pretty good top and bottom. I only have a 17 dex bottom. I had a 21 dex bottom for whatever reason. It's not like super crucial though. Okay, so we're here at the end. So you need at least one inventory slot opened up. Um, go here. Complete the quest. And then after you complete the quest, a light bulb will immediately reappear over your head, asking you to do it again, which is fine. So really quick before we accept the next quest, scroll down and you can see he's given me two chaos elixirs. So they each give me a max 20 HP. So one, two. Boom, I have 40 more base HP. Um, it took me about 20, 25 minutes to do, um, which really isn't terrible. So you could get about 80 HP an hour. Um, and if you just don't have anything to do and you did it at least once a day as a daily, uh, it's like not completely awful. And you have a fast travel pass. I kind of like it. I'll link the guide I used in the description. So that way you people who are interested in it can kind of plan out see if it's worth their time um i kind of like that it gives me something to do outside of just you know your daily apq maybe dojo your boss runs etc etc um and it's a, a super nice alternative to hp washing especially for people on like their first time characters like this was my first time character so i didn't really have the funds to hp wash um, and this is a good alternative to it, at least in my opinion. I know some people kind of disagree with that. Um, I know some people kind of disagree with HP washing in general, and I definitely understand. Um, it's not the best game design, but I think for dedicated players, it's not completely awful. Um, especially when you're given an okay alternative like this. Um, and there's also a lot of items that give a pretty good amount of HP as well in the game. Um, you've got your medals, you've got the belts, the Black Fist Cloak, and it seems all marginal, but I think it adds up pretty quick, um, which is something super nice. So, anyway, so you select the quest, you have a message, search, bang, boom. Okay, so this is another Leaf Aria one. Um, we will go to Leaf Aria again, you can go do it. Um, yeah, this one's pretty easy. A lot of them are in Leafaria, which isn't super bad. The ones that kind of suck are the ones that are very far apart. Um, I know I've had a few that are like in Ludibrim and Aquarium, Aquarium, however you say it. I have some that are in uh, Zimpangyu, Shawatown, 
Um, and those are the ones that are kind of rough. They're pretty far away. Um, but that's where the fast travel pass comes in handy. Definitely also having Silver Mane is super handy. Um, if Now, I will say something about this is mages can't do this. Um, so it's basically all attacker classes outside of mage. So um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, peace out until next time.